Happy Tuesday. How you doing? Hey, I want to talk to you today about how to make good things happen. You want good things to happen in your life? I people people I've heard so many people say, "Oh, Pastor Jim, I just need something good to happen today." We can make it happen. How many of you know I can make good things happen for you? You can make good things happen. We can constantly make good things happen. Good things happen to me all the time. All the time. I stumble into good things. I'm just out walking around, laughing and a scratching, having a great time, rocking and a rolling, and just whistling Dixie, and I'm whistling all kinds of stuff. And you know what? Good things happen to me. Good things, just out of the clear blue. Good things happen, I find things. I find things. I'm great. You know, sometimes you find something and, and it's, it's a good thing. You know what I find? I find money. I find good deals. I find great every, everything. Everything I find is just, it's wonderful. Find all kinds, bring home stuff. Because I find things. Good things happened to me. I meet wonderful people. Always talking to wonderful people. Good thing. I get good praise reports all the time. Those are good things. Amen. I want you to make good things happen in your life. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart. Get smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Actually, Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. The ultimate pastor. One ultimate pastor in the whole country. Me. We had a contest. I won. There was a vote taken all throughout the country. I won. And there was no evidence of fraud in that election. No evidence. Where have you ever heard that before? But there's no evidence of fraud. I won the election. Fair and square. Even though my brother, my twin brother, was the final arbitrator. He made the decision. He counted up the votes. He counted up the votes. How many of you know it's not so important as to who votes. The important thing is who counts the votes. Find your, if you're running for an election, and make sure your brother is counting the, counting the votes. Makes a big difference. Amen. You have a good time. We have a wonderful time in the Lord. We don't take ourselves too seriously, folks. Amen. <laughs> we have a wonderful ministry, but we don't take things too seriously because everything is every we give God all the glory. God gets all the glory. I'm just enjoying myself. I am just going along with the flow. I'm going along with the Lord on this. And I'm having a wonderful time doing it. Glory to God. We want to make good things happen in our lives. Amen. It's just, just people need good things to happen. You can cause good things to happen. And do you know how? By doing what's in my book. The power of positive words. It's positive words. You start, we, we, now I've had a lot of bad things happen in my life. I've had horrific things happen in my life, folks. Horrific. But I've had a lot of good things too. And do you know what? The good things always accompany the words. Your words will determine whether you're having bad things happen in your life or whether you're having... I have literally heard people say, nothing good ever happens for me. And do you know what? I got news for you. Nothing good will ever happen for those people. And do you know why? because of what comes out of their mouth. You start talking about yourself, 
about your life, about your job. If, if you have a job you hate, a lot of people hate their jobs. Start saying, I love my job. I have a wonderful job. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Everybody at your job will start to treat you different. All of a sudden, your hostile work environment will become a wonderful work environment. Things will start to happen for you. Nobody likes me. I don't have any friends. Oh, well, be a friend. There was a lady in Tulsa. She happened to move in right next door to us. We had a townhouse out on the east side by Eastland Mall. If you know your way around Tulsa, it's out on the east side. And that's where we were living when we were in Bible college. And this lady moved in next door to us. And she had been living in Tulsa, I guess, a little while. I don't know. But she, she said to us, she says, this, this is the most unfriendly city I have ever seen, she says. Oh, 25, 30 years ago, Tulsa was absolutely the friendliest city in the world. It was full of Bible-believing people. Spirit-filled, word of faith, tongue-talking, meeting, going, Bible-thumping, faith, healing, CD-listening, people, Christians, born-again, spirit-filled. I'm telling you, these people were just so full of joy. And re there was revivals going on. Rodney Howard Brown had been to town. Benny Hinn was coming to town. All these people, they have a word explosions and Brother Hagen was there and Oral Roberts and Sheila Osborne. And I mean to tell you, there was a lot of good stuff going on in that town. And there was a lot of joy in that town. There, there was a, you don't notice that atmosphere so much in Tulsa now as you used to. But you, I'm telling you, 25, 30 years ago, when we were living there and we were going to Bible college, there, there was just an incredible atmosphere there. Incredible. Friend, people, you, you know, you, you, you run, you stop, if your car stops along the road, you're going to have 10 people wanting to help you. I mean, it just, there's just, everybody was just so great and so nice and so wonderful. But this woman, she said, this is the most unfriendly place in the world. Well, she was not friendly. Not friendly at all. One day, my car battery quit, died. So I banged on her door. And I'm standing there with a pair of jumper cables. I said, can I get a jump off your car to get my car started? She says, no, I can't do that. My car doesn't work doing it. Well, all cars work doing that. She wouldn't do it for me. It's okay. I had 25 people. 25 other people to call and somebody was there in 10 minutes because everybody wasn't like her. And she wondered why she didn't have any friends. You want good things to happen to you, be a good person. That's a, that's a, that's a great place to start. Be a good person. Be friendly to people. Be a friend. You want people to love you, love other people. I love God's people. I have a love inside me for God's people. I can't even explain to you. I have a love for my church family that, that just, it's just incredible inside the love I have for these people. I love these people. I love our partners. I tell them that all the time. If I love you, I'm going to tell you. Amen. And we do. I have this, this godly love inside me for his people. Amen. And people love me too. You give love, you get, you're going to reap what you sow. You want to make good things happen,
do good things for other people. Always be ready to do something good. You know what I get a bang out of? I get a bang out of when I'm driving a car, letting somebody get in. Stopping and letting somebody pull out. Just a little thing. But I'll tell you what, it lights me up. Just to do that. I like to do that. Mary says, you're going to let cars in? Absolutely, I'm going to let somebody in. I'm going to let a car or two in. We pull up to a busy light and there's somebody trying. I'm going to let them in. Why is that? I love to do things for God's people. And sometimes I always, I always say, Lord, make me to be a blessing today. Well, sometimes that might be the only way I get a chance to be a blessing that day. I don't want to pass up an opportunity to be a blessing. These people don't know me. The most of them, they have no idea who I am. All they know is somebody let them in. Somebody did something nice for them. We go to Aldi's. We like to shop at Aldi's. You have to pay a quarter to get your cart. We always give our cart to somebody. without, And, and we will not take the quarter. Amen. Little thing. 25 cents. But it, you know what? But some people, 25 cents, people say, oh, here, take the quarter. Take the quarter. I say, no, no. Be blessed. Be blessed. I've done something good for somebody. I will get good things back. That's how we make good things happen in our lives. You reap what you sow. You want good things to happen in your life? Do good things for other people. So simple. So simple. Pray for other people. People will pray for you. Glory to God. Jesus, Paul said, he says, God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, that we, that we will also reap. So whatever you want, do for other people. That's how you can make good things happen in your life. And talk good. Start saying, good things always happen for me. I always find things. People like me. I'm a wonderful person. Why do you think we go through that confession every day? And I'll tell you why. Because I need it. I need to talk like that too. Amen. You know, everything I, I, I teach works in my life too. Everything in God's word works in his life. How many of you know that, that God has to, you know, there's a law of faith. God made a law of faith. Nothing happens without faith. Well, the same thing works for him. God has to have faith in his words too. When God said, light be, let there be light, what did he think was going to happen? He knew what was going to happen because he had faith in his words. Jesus, when he said to the storm, peace, be still, what did he think was going to happen? He knew what was going to happen. Because he has faith in his words. Develop faith in your words. Know that when you say good things about yourself, you're going to get good things back. Is that good today? Let's make good things happen in your life. Glory to God, huh? Call me today to speak the blessing over you. Yesterday was blessing day. If you didn't call yesterday, call today. Amen. Because I want to speak God's word for word blessing over you. God gave us a blessing to speak. And he said, here is how I want it done. I want it done like this. And he gave us the words. And so I speak those words. That is, believe me, when I speak the blessing over you folks, I am not speaking my words. I am speaking God's words. Word for word. And I don't change a word in that. I keep it exactly the way God said to do it. Because when I do then he's obligated to bless you. God said, you do it, and I will bless them. I put my name on them. I want God's name on me. I want God's name on you. Amen. I am determined that you are going to live a curse-free, blessed life. And I will use the power in the name of Jesus to make it happen for you. You need healing today? Call me. You need to be blessed? Call me. You need to find something? Call me. Whatever it is you need, call me. I am always available to you.